Right, let's look at my in-home vehicle to grid setup. We're just going to look at my home installation here. Um, when I had my vehicle to grid set up installed, we had to uh, comply with the local D uh, DNO, the, the distribution network operator, which is UK Power Networks. And they stipulated to Octopus uh, uh, Energy that we couldn't export uh, any more than eight kilowatts from, from the home. Now, because I have solar panels installed on the home uh, as, as well as a, as a vehicle to grid um, a car, um, there was a there was a there was a point where you know potentially um, we we could have uh, you know seven kilowatts coming out of the car and you know up to up to four kilowatts coming off of my roof. Now obviously that's kind of like at the height of summer, like June July time is normally where we peak our, our output. So actually in reality, um, this trial ends in March. So we're, we're never actually going to get there because of the, the, the delays uh, with all of this stuff. Um, you know, it was installed, uh, you know, kind of after the summer peak of this year and it will be gone by the summer peak of next year. So, um, you know, in a way, this is a little bit of a waste of time, but, you know, they've got to comply with what's been set out. For, uh, and, and if it had been installed earlier, it would have all, you know, probably been necessary. Um, but that's why we're doing it. So let's just have a quick look at, um, you know, what, what's, what's going on here. Rather than me sitting in my, uh, in my utility room, which is crammed, um, I've just popped this picture on the screen here so I can show you. And we can uh, also overlay some uh, very rudimentary graphics. Um, now, what you can see in this area here is the incoming uh, line and neutral into the home. Uh, so this would have uh, used to have gone straight into the, the top consumer unit here somewhere up, up there. Um, now instead, what it's come down is it uh, comes into this uh, du duplicating box here. So it's just a little splitter. Um, both the line and the neutral um, have um, uh, you know, then two tails coming out of the, the splitters. Uh, one going off up into the original fuse board and then one just going down here into the new um, new unit, which is where all of the current limiting um, is going on. Now, what's happened here, and you can see that there's some um, there's some there's some other bits going on here. So we'll just um, we'll just talk about that as well. Um, but essentially, in here, and I've got another I've got another close up picture of this. So here's a picture of the lower box just now. So. What we've got in here, you can see, is the current limiting unit. So this is the unit that's going to activate when um, the amount of energy being exported from the home is over eight kilowatts. Um, and what you can see here is the vehicle to grid charger. So this is the wall box quasar, and it's got its own um, 40 amp breaker that you can see there, see 40. Um, and then you've got the solar PV as well. So um, with the solar PV, what we've um, had to have done here, um, and this will become apparent when we look at the, um, the install uh, overall. So we'll just uh, go back to the other, the other picture here, is that essentially they've extended the wiring from the original solar install. So the original solar install, uh, there's a breaker, uh, it's a kind of an isolator. Um, there's an isolating unit just here. You can see this handle here. Um, and the, the export meter just up here. Um, now, obviously all of that wiring has remained where it is and these boxes remain where it is. What they've just done is instead of the wiring going into a breaker somewhere here, they've just added some extensions and brought it down uh, into here and then all of the new stuff for the wallbox quasar unit you know so you've got your your live your line in here it'll go to a breaker here and then from that breaker it will go up into here which is a matty unit um, and then it will leave the matty unit and go out down to where the charger is on the other side of the house. So that's what's happening here. Now the Matty unit, if you've not heard of a Matty unit, this is um, 
this is a device that basically just looks at whether um, there's a uh, there's a there's a break in your neutral um, uh, coming into the com coming into the house. So if you if you've got an earth um, uh, if you've got if you've got a neutral problem, so um, in 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 the street out in the road um, where your your kind of electricity supply is coming in, it's not three cores. It's just it's just two. So you've just got live and neutral. Your earth comes off of your neutral um, uh, out in the street. So if you have a problem with your your neutral out in the street, not in your house, then um, what it can mean is essentially you're left without an earth as well and, and, and in a vehicle situation that can actually mean that the car becomes live and you essentially become the route to earth which means you get electrocuted um, which is which is not good and one of the things I mentioned as a piece of text on the on the on the on one of my last videos um, was actually incorrect so uh, there doesn't have to be a fault with the vehicle for that situation to occur. It's just that the natural flow of energy, if there if there if, if there is no neutral, it will take the path to Earth instead. Um, and um, if you're touching the car, that will be that will be you. Uh, it's um it's it's something that I'm going to have to look into a little bit more because actually we don't have a Matty device on our my energy Zappy, um, so. It's a it's a very unlikely uh, thing to happen, um, but obviously being electrocuted, especially off a 32 amp supply, is um, is not something um, anyone would recommend. Interestingly, though, as a segue, the My Energy, the new Zappy, is one of the only devices currently on the market, a vehicle charger, where you don't need that Matty device because it's got it built in. So that makes it quite good value actually as well. Um, so um, there are other ways of there are other ways of doing this. Um, uh, um, ramming an earth rod into the ground near your vehicle charger has been the thing that's been done um, for 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 a while. Um, but again, when I had my car, because I was a sort of early adopter of electric cars, uh, I didn't actually need, as in need, as in the electricians didn't need to put it into past building regulations or not building regulations, past the um, uh, the seventeenth edition. Um, uh, or whatever, I think it was 17th edition at the time. Uh, and then in 18th edition, uh, the, the, the requirement for some kind of earth rod or uh, other type of device um, to protect against this fault condition um, came into being. And I had my stuff just before that came in. I think I had it in the November, October installation. And then it didn't come through in, in a regulation until like January of the following year. So I just missed it. Um, so we'll be looking at that in, in probably a future video, try and make that a bit safer for the family. Now, the one thing that makes it kind of safe at the moment is that we charge our cars overnight when we're asleep and not touching the cars. Um, um, but um, yeah, uh, so that's that. <clears throat> so right, so that's, that's basically what's happening here. You can see how it's been rewired to um, uh, cope with uh, all of this extra gubbins. Um, now, one of the other things that we had to shifty around uh, was the My Energy uh, devices. So you can see just here, we've got the little hub uh, Harvey uh, unit. It's a Harvey unit. Um, what the Harvey unit does, if, you, if you're not familiar with the My Energy ecosystem, this is a sort of remote sensing device. It's self-powered, so it, it's not self-powered. It, it scavenges power from the, from the, from the um, circuits that it's monitoring. Um, and what this device does in this uh, in this instance is it, it helps to work out whether we're exporting or importing electricity and also sees how much solar generation is happening. So uh, we had to move some things around here because we started to get some really weird readings um, because what, what, what happened was some of these things weren't shifted around when all of this, uh, uh, all of this new stuff came along. So, all of a sudden, the solar generation and the um, uh, and the, and the charger down in this lower box uh, weren't being monitored. So, of course, the my energy stuff just had no clue what was going on at that point. So, uh, essentially, what we have is uh, a sensor off the line coming into the home, uh, and it's kind of just behind the wall here, 
Um, and what that's detecting is energy going out. I'll try and draw an arrow here. Energy going out of the home and energy coming into the home. Um, and then we've got a sensor here looking at the solar generation. So we're only ever going to have solar coming in. So I'll try and draw that again. So we're only going to have solar coming into the home. So there's the solar coming in. And what that then gives us is a view of when the zappy unit, which is our other electric vehicle charger, can actually charge um, off excess solar generation. Or the eddy unit, and this can be prioritized, the eddy unit can then come in and charge up our hot water in our in our hot water tank by switching the immersion heater on. So there's two ways that we can um, we can use the excess solar coming off of our house. So the other thing that this little Harvey unit is doing is it's looking at the vehicle to grid. Um, so we've added another unit, another little inductive clamp here. And obviously vehicle to grid can be going out to the grid, but obviously we can also charge the car via that unit so we can get that going uh, in, in both directions as well. So this means that for me, I can now monitor the the whole setup here through my existing My Energy setup. Um, so I can configure the app to show, and I can put this on the screen just now actually, um, I can configure the app to show energy going from the car out to the grid, energy coming in from the grid to the car, solar generation going out, and also um, uh, you know energy just coming in from the grid when we're not generating enough energy from, from the devices in the home, um, the car or the solar panels, um, and, and then it going into the home and how much, how many kilowatts um, we're consuming at any one time or how many kilowatts are going out, how many kilowatts are being generated, um, all, all of that kind of stuff through there. So it's a really, really useful app. And in my next video, we'll go into that a little bit more um, and look at some of the graphs that we can see um, off that, off that, off that. And I think that'd be quite interesting um, to, to kind of review how, you know, how it is actually all working, how it is all actually all working together. I'm really glad I've got that actually, because otherwise this thing would be a bit of a black box for me, uh, because the, the, um, the vehicle to grid app uh, is, is quite basic in, in, in what it shows you. So, that, so that's it. I just wanted to put a quick video together just to show you the setup. Um, it, it looks a bit of a mess. Um, now, I did say in the beginning of this video that this is not likely to be something anyone with a vehicle to grid product would ever have to, to, to have installed on their home. And there's a very, very good reason for that. Um, if this ever becomes a mainstream technology, then there will be other mechanisms in which uh, uh, this kind of current limiting situation can be enabled. The, the easiest one of those um, would be something like the My Energy setup that we have here and then linking that to the car and then setting a threshold overall for the house. And that would allow passive monitoring, which is much, much easier than kind of cutting into the lines in the in in the you know coming into the home as, as has been done here um, much easier to just have a kind of software layer that that governs um, the whole thing and if there's any communication breakdown in all of that the thing just turns off and doesn't work um, so you know I think I think that's the way it will go it will be much more software driven um, cars are full of software um, and you know I think that's that's you know much more palatable for people than you know having all of this kind of stuff um, stuck in the homes and it might not be practical in in many cases for this kind of volume even if this is required though in a worst case um, we, we you know we saw what's involved in inside that box there and uh, uh, you know it's mostly empty there's there's kind of you know 90% of that box has got nothing in it um, it's just air so even if this kind of thing was required in the future um, the footprint of it would be 
uh, much, much, much reduced in a kind of product mode. But I, I, I strongly believe that you could do everything that's going on here with with the right software. But of course, one of the things about software solutions uh, when you're doing it across multiple manufacturers is standards are very important. And one of the things that tends to lag behind in all kinds of new technologies is standardization and standards. Um, hence why we get multiple charging standards and multiple video and DVD and Ultra HD and HD DVD. <coughs> all of those things are the results of you know, innovation leading the way and the standards kind of following in um, after, after the fact. So that's what we've got going on here. In the next video, we'll talk about uh, the, um, the, the actual, you know, this working and seeing how the energy is, um, is, being, is being consumed, how we're contributing back to the grid and what that's doing in, uh, overall uh, for, for the home. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.